Hey everyone, welcome back to Sleuths Investigate. I'm excited to announce to you guys that we are back and currently working on some new cases. So please check back for a new video soon. In this video, I'm going to go over an interesting cold case from 1970. This case has a ton of evidence, but no arrests have ever been made. Please leave your thoughts and theories in the comments section below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. To Alan and Sherry Burt on January 28, 1955 in Littleton, Colorado, Mary Lee Ruth Burt was an ambitious and vibrant girl. She was the only girl out of three children and was the shy type, but had a jovial sense of humor. Her father was the vice president and general manager of Burt Chevrolet in Inglewood and was well known within the community. In 1970, Mary Lee was a 15-year-old freshman attending Goddard Junior High School near the Columbine Valley area. Many of her classmates described her as a popular girl who focused on her studies and activities. She was into swimming, gymnastics, water skiing, cheerleading, and tap dancing. It was noted Mary Lee and her older brother used to do performances at the old Elitch's Theater in Denver during a few summer months. She had a compassion and love for ballet as well. It was her dream to one day go to New York City to the ballet company. Sadly, she would never get to pursue this dream as well as many other dreams she'd had. A cold Colorado night on February 26, Marilee had just finished cheering on the high school basketball team and decided to walk to a friend's house on Wedgeway. Once she arrived, she tried to phone her mom to come pick her up. Sadly, no one answered her call and Mrs. Burt was already en route to the school to get her. With daylight nearly at an end, Marilee decided to start walking home alone. Around 6.50 p.m., Marilee's older brother Raymond was driving home down Middlefield Road. He spotted a blonde girl with pigtails and a green cheerleading outfit walking alongside the road. He passed the girl, and after a few seconds, he looked in his rearview mirror and seen a two-tone pickup truck heading south. He noticed the truck stopped beside the girl, and the girl with the pigtails stopped walking and approached the truck. Raymond didn't think anything of it and continued driving home. Shortly after Mrs. Burt arrived to the school, she realized Marilee was not there. She drove home and discovered Marilee was nowhere to be found. After three and a half hours of waiting to see if she would return, the family, nervously, called the police and reported her missing. Around noon the next day, a highway employee who was conducting routine work in Deer Creek Canyon near a bridge spotted a body half submerged. He radioed the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office. The body was later identified as Marilee Burt. The medical report stated she had died from strangulation from a rope and she was raped. She was also struck on the head with some sort of heavy object, which could have rendered her unconscious, but did not fracture her skull. It was also noted that her cheerleading outfit and purse, like the one shown here, are all missing even to this day. It was discovered that Raymond, Marilee's older brother, was the last person to see her alive aside from the killer. He didn't recognize her that night because Marilee never wore her hair in pigtails and he didn't get a chance to see her face. He explained to the police the man driving the truck possibly had brown hair and was more than likely 30 to 40 years of age. The family was adamant that Marilee wouldn't have stopped walking to talk with a stranger, therefore she more than likely knew the person in the pickup truck. Law enforcement became steadfast in their investigation with Marilee's case. Dozens of people were interviewed, and a helicopter from Denver flew over the surrounding areas to try to locate the pickup truck. Sadly, nothing turned up, even with reward money and pleas to the public from the family. Almost 11 years after Marilee's murder, it was discovered a former gymnastics teacher was found to have a 30-year record of sexually assaulting young girls. He was also a mentor for Marilee. Law enforcement has stated there was DNA found on Marilee's body and there was also hair and fiber evidence, all which were tested and ran through the national database. More than two dozen suspects have been excluded, including family. Even the gymnastics teacher's DNA was tested and it was found not to be a match on file. Could this possible suspect be another student's father? Was it possible Marilee did stop to talk with a stranger that fateful night? To this day, Marilee's case still draws in dozens of tips yearly and is actively worked on. This February 26, 2020 will mark 50 years since Marilee's life was taken too soon. If you have any tips or information on her case, please call the Arapahoe County Sheriff's Office at 
4711.